Freddy, good afternoon. What's going on, man? How are you, sir? Good, brother. Good. Running around a little bit, trying to get some work done, but staying yeah. safe above all else, man. How are you? Good. Hanging in there one day at a time. Yeah. Uh, right off the bat, I just want to say thank you so much for taking time out of your day. I know you, you're pretty particular about your schedule and you're very precise on who you let in and now so I really appreciate the opportunity so thank you once again yeah thanks for having me man hey pleasure's all mine so first thing first how's family how's the kids big getting even bigger in this last month just like me yeah <laughs> have, have you been, but, have you been watch, binge eating and watching Netflix at the same time no I never do that no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you know probably just as much as anyone else man I try to protect um you know, my mind, my body, everything as best as I can. But we've yeah. all had to adapt a little bit. And I've had to loosen the reins a little bit on the schedule with the family. Yeah. If not, it's like a drill sergeant walking around in there. And they're, they're, they're yeah. not too happy when, when Freddie goes into that mode, you know. No, man. But, yeah, it's tough. But everybody at the house, it's kind of hard. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, for sure, what, was the first? What was the first week like for you? Well, I, I think I slept in until 6, 5.45 or 6 for the first time in a few years. Uh -huh. um, and so that felt weird. I actually, more sleep makes my body even more tired, honestly. So yeah. I'm not a big fan, but I would just sit there. And then, then after a while, um, I discovered that the family didn't want to get up as early as I did. So I would just sit there and like think, or I would write. And I even bought this little light that clips onto a book. And yeah. so you can read and, and write without disturbing the family. So it was tough, man. I think uh, at first it felt like a long weekend. And then about day number four, see, my wife and I, we've never been on a seven-day vacation. The, our friends wanted to go on a seven-day cruise. I just can't do seven days without working, man. Or just being dialed into my schedule. I don't yeah. know how people do it. Yeah. And I was, we were talking about this, right? And you were like telling me I couldn't do it. Remember what I was talking about is I think – you know, that's me too, is that the way your mind and mine works is we're too hyperactive. Our, I feel like our brain is going constantly a thousand miles per hour. Yeah. And, and that will probably prevent us from taking a seven day vacation. I don't think I've ever taken a seven day vacation, maybe max four. And I yeah. was probably working on the fourth day also, you know? So, yeah. The, after three days, my mind is just like, we got, we got goals. We got stuff to do. Let's go. Yeah, you know? yeah. so. so, you know, you know, the main purpose of my, you know, the interviews that I'm doing right now is, is I just want to get input from everybody, all the, all the heavy producers, people like yourself, brokers that have been in the business for a long period of time. Right. What yeah. do you think is headed? Like what, what do you think is happening in the, in the real estate world, in the market, in your opinion? Well, I'll, I'll, t I'll tell you something about you, man, that, that might surprise you. I do pay attention to trends and what's yeah. going on nationally, but not as much as I do locally. And to, get, to, to, feel, to feel a pulse, Alex, and really see how the heartbeat is doing and how something is really performing, the closer you get, the better. So at a national level, I've heard a lot of experts say this is what they anticipate happening, right? Right. I'll tell you what, I do, I do think it's going to be permanent changes in every aspect, how business is conducted, the way the banks function, the way brokerages function, all that. There will be some permanent changes. I don't know what they're, what they're going to be, Alex. Nobody does. And, yeah. and, 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 I, and I won't even predict, but I'll tell you this. I'll tell you how it's affecting my people. And I'll tell you how it's affecting other realtors that I talk to here in Kern County, right? The changes, I think, are we're going to get back to, even though working remote has been a trend now, especially in real estate for a long time now, right? I think yeah. it was like 42% of people that have non-physical labor jobs can actually at least part-time work from anywhere. You're going to see that number pop into probably the low 60s in the next two years. A lot of companies are discovering that they're going to be able to do that remotely when before they were going to test it. Now they were forced into it. And so it's going to become the norm. But as far as the real estate industry goes, man, I'll tell you what I have, I'm observing. Agents are getting back to appreciating or at least recognizing the value in building relationships, right? And, and I never want my agents to bank on technology. 
They come in here so excited about, dude, this new program, I'm going to get all these leads and all this. I said, okay, okay, good. That's good. Get excited. You need different sources of lead generation to grow your database. Absolutely. But we're focused so much on transactional business, Alex, that we forget about staying in touch with the people that already, we already got them to trust us yeah. by uh, handling objections and focusing on what they really wanted and being the person that was going to guide them to give them the confidence and so show them that we're professional, show them that we're competent, right? And, and straightforward. We got them. We closed the transaction. They never hear from us. They never hear from us, right? A poll that I read, and it's an old poll. It, it's probably, you know, three years old, but it said that, you know, that something like, 67% of, or 82% of people said that they would work with the realtor that they used the last time and only like 15% did. So in other words, they were saying, yes, I'll use you again, but your lack of communication, your lack of getting a pulse for where your client is, what are their needs? Where are their kids going to school? Do yeah. they, they have any job? When are they retiring? What do they like? Do they have ambitions of moving somewhere? So you don't get to know those things unless you keep in contact with them. And by the time they're ready to move, Alex, guess what? So they, they, they Somebody else them. is already in the picture. Done. It's a wrap. No, I absolutely yeah. agree with you 100%. And you know? one, one of the key things that I keep my follow up is, I always think, you know, I have, let's say 20 clients, right? Mm -hmm. I wanna know their first name, last name, and if I can't remember when I talked to them last, it's time to reach out to them. Absolutely. And that's the way, and, and I mean, great thing happened this morning. I called the COI. I've never done business with him, but just, you know, good friend of the family. Yeah. Just a, a basic call. How are you doing? Just come to see how it's staying with the family. He has no need in real estate right now. Like he is not looking to sell, not looking to buy nothing. He called me today. He says, Alex, I have a friend who's been looking to purchase a condo. Can't seem to figure out where to go, where to start. I forwarded your number to him. Perfect. And I was just like, wow. That's you it. Know? It's, it's That's that it. simple, right? Um, yeah. I really had no reasons to call him, but I was just genuinely calling him, you know, because his nurse, his daughter just became a nurse, started working in the hospital. So I was just calling to say hello. Hey, how are things? How is she doing with her new job? And that, that was the whole purpose of my call. And yeah. it just led to a whole different, different thing, right? So, yeah, yeah. you know, I, I believe, I highly believe in real estate, guys. We, we just do our work and you do it with your ethics and 100%, right? Yeah. God will serve you. That, that's what Absolutely. Saying, you, know? you know, it's, it's, it's just because you've never done business with this person that you were talking about today doesn't mean they're not an asset to your business. Oh, absolutely. you know, and the more good you do and the more action you take, isn't it funny how you keep attracting good, attracting good things? Absolutely. Yeah. You know, and they say, well, oh, you're lucky. You know what? If I'm taking enough action, I'm going to put myself in enough positions to where when luck does happen, it's going to happen to me. Yeah. Luck ain't going to happen to your butt sitting down on the couch. And, and you know what I mean? And it, so yeah. the more action you take, the more luck, uh, 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 good things. I wouldn't even call them luck, but good things happen. And I think that reaching out to people when you have nothing, it's called enlightened self-interest, as yeah. Jim would call it enlightened self-interest. So you're doing good. You're providing value, providing service, but you got to be dumb to not realize that something's going to happen in return. Oh, absolutely. You know, you know I, what I'm saying? I agree with you. I, I absolutely you. agree with you 100%. It, it's, it's mindset. You know, it all, it all falls down to mindset. And, and yeah. I was reading, the, I just started reading this great book. Um, and I, there's this one line I picked up is at Ishmael recommended it to me. Um, the, What's the book? Man, Babylon. Okay. Yeah. We read that in our mastermind group when he was in our mastermind group. Yeah. And, and one of the things he says, the, the book says, I mean, I'm almost done with it. It says the work is your best friend. Make it. work your best friend at the end of the story and everything will just pan out. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, you know, mindset, just working and giving it your 100%, your, 
you're solid. You're solid. Yeah. You so know, what what is it that you're doing nowadays? You have a lot of time on your hand. How how are you staying busy and not going crazy? What are you reading? What does your morning routine look like? Tell me all that good stuff, man. What what can I what can I pick up from you today? Oh man. So I do have a lot of time on my hands, but it is accounted for. Okay, okay fair enough. Yeah. Fair so enough. free time is few and far between, but um, you know, even my I'm sure you've seen that I golf, even my golf is uh, time blocked. And that, that, that's when people say, hey, can you meet at this time? No, I have an appointment. And then someone will say, no, you're going golfing with me that day. I'll say, yeah, that's my appointment, right? <laughs> you know? And so um, I'm a big time blocking uh, 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 fan. You know, I've learned a lot of things in the, I'm going to tell you when the market in 07 to 08, remember, I, well, you were probably, I, I, I wasn't in the yeah, big yeah. but still, I'm sure you've read about it or talked to enough people. Yeah. I told myself something, Alex. I said, you said that to make work your best friend, you said it says that in, in, in the Richest yep. Man of Babylon. Right? Yeah. Okay. I made structure and accountability my best friend because I had already made real estate sales and dedicating my time to serving people helping them with the purchase and sale of homes. I made that my best friend, but the market threatened our relationship. The market threatened my ability to get up every day and continue to solely, not also cell phones, not also cars, not also baseball cards to sell real estate. It threatened my love affair with it. So what did I have to do? Just like when something threatens your health, what must you do? You must work on developing the disciplines and the habits to eliminate the threat, okay? So what I did is I developed a love affair with discipline and accountability. And I don't like discipline. Yeah. And I don't like accountability. But because of it, it has solidified my relationship with this industry that I love and therefore has helped me be able to create a life that I truly enjoy. Yeah. So accountability, I want to knock it in the head. What, what does, what does, some of your, what does some of your accountability look like if you don't mind sharing? Oh, I don't mind at all. I mean, I put, I've actually put classes on way before you were in the business at seven O's different places and people leave there and, and, and some of them have joined our office, some of them have not, but they just leave there and go, wow. And I'm like, look, it's a lot. Take one yeah. thing, master one thing every six months, Alex. Yeah. And you've been in the business, what, going on three years now? Yeah. There's a few things that you really need to master in this business. So imagine, and I'm sure that you've taken the steps uh, uh, that have gotten you to where you are. But if you master one thing every six months, right? In three years, you have six things that you've mastered. You know how many things most agents have mastered? <laughs> okay, not that many, right? Um, they're not that many, unfortunately. But I get up and I'll, I'll tell you what, when I coach somebody, I'm gonna give you two examples. When I coach somebody, Alex, they say, well, the afternoons are, they're, you know, like after three, I go home because I don't have any appointments. Okay, why don't you have appointments? Well, I'm just too tired. Of it. Why are you tired? Well, I, for lunch, I ate this. Okay, why did you eat that for lunch? Well, because I didn't get any breakfast. Why didn't you eat breakfast? Well, because I got up late. Why did you get up late? Well, because I went to bed late. Why did you go to bed late? So it always comes down to one thing, as simple as this may sound. And you're never going to get anything like earth shattering from me that you even haven't, either haven't heard, or it's just plain, not, it's common sense. I said, yeah, what do you, you know, it, it's a ripple effect, right? Your schedule is a ripple effect. Um, I pencil everything into my calendar. Yeah. Uh, that, that's the first thing I go to because I don't, I have a really bad memory of a fish. If you ask me what I had for lunch two hours ago, I'd be like, um, um, I don't I have like really think about it. Right. So forget about my, if I penciled you into the calendar for tomorrow, I'll have to check that following morning to make sure I, I have you penciled in. Me too. Um, me can too. you hear me okay? Yeah, I can. I okay. can. Yeah. Me too. Me so too. it's a ripple effect. And the other point is implementation, right? You know, there's a lot of accountability 
um, are, are you staying true to yourself, right? That, that's the bigger Absolutely. question. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's, that's the thing. That's the way I'm looking at it. Yeah. So going back to the coaching thing. So I, I tell everybody, what good happens after 10 p.m.? Tell me what good thing happens after 10 p.m. And they can never say anything. Unless you're spending quality time with your significant other, that's the only good thing. That, that connection is needed between two partners. But you can also do that at 9.30 or 9, right? The, if you got kids, if you got kids, who's the parent here? What time are they going to bed? If, if you're telling me after 9 o'clock, you got no control and you need to work on that. Anybody, I remember, I remember you know, my entire life, I, I, we, we had to go either, either I had to go to school at 7 in the morning or I had to go to work at 5 in the morning before I went to school at 7 in the morning or if it was the weekend, I had to go to work at five in the morning. So going to bed late, I had that my parents to thank for that. You know, they, they said, hey, boom, 8.30, 9, you're in bed. So me, I go to bed about 9.30. I tell my, my, my people, I said, tell me what good hap happens after 10.30. You're well, probably on, scrolling on social media that you shouldn't be doing. Yeah. You're probably watching TV shows that honestly you can go without. Don't tell me you're sitting there reading a good book because most people are. And see, that's the thing that gets me in trouble sometimes. I'm so passionate about the few things that I think we can help people build the lives they truly desire and be successful that people think I judge uh, because they're doing all these things. But you have to understand it's a struggle for me too. It's a struggle for everybody. So when I'm giving a speech or coaching or putting on a class, you know who I'm talking to, Alex? I'm talking to myself. Yeah. Yeah. to get stronger in all those areas. And so what good happens after 10, they can never say anything good does. And if we can get them dialed in and in bed by 9.30 and crash out of 10, right? Then they get up early and then they are able to go to the gym. They're able to meditate. So that's some of the things that I do. I go to bed usually 9.30, no, no more than 10. Even when I go to parties on the weekends and Christmas stuff, you look over me 9.30, I'm like, you know, I'm like this. So I'll say, hey, give me another beer. Give me another beer or give me another taco to keep me up, right? <laughs> so, so, so getting up in the morning, I get up at 4.30. I go to the gym. I, I come back. I do a 15-minute uh, meditation on, a, on an app called Headspace. It's an awesome app. And then um, I spend a little bit of time with my children, all right? And then I get ready. Sometimes I eat breakfast, sometimes I don't. It's by design. I do a little bit of the, the, the intermittent fasting to like 11.30, right? But when I do, it's very small. It's like some Ritz crackers and some, some uh, strawberries or a banana, right? Then I get to the office about 7.45, 8. I do 30 minutes of reading. I put a sign on my door like there is right now. Said, hey, don't bother me. I'm reading and nobody bothers me. Not more than once anyways. And, uh, and um, from 8.30 to 9, if the guys are out there training and role playing or doing something, I'll go out there with them and do it. If not, I'm in here um, either doing my incantations or filming a video or uh, doing some additional reading. And sometimes I log on and watch some educational stuff uh, on there or listen to a, to a, to a podcast. You know, yeah. you like podcasts? Uh, absolutely. Podcast guy? 100%. Mm -hmm. it, I've uh, stopped listening to music uh, or, or news channels and stuff like that. I've replaced it with podcasts and um, just. Well, reading now, right? Yeah, reading, reading and now, I, I, audiobooks, audiobooks, right? So before I wasn't, I wasn't, I can't sit, sit still and uh, read. But now with the whole quarantine, I'm really sitting down and reading a page or two. Uh, yeah. But before I was a big audiobook and podcast person, definitely. Yeah. Isn't yeah. there something different about reading though? There is, there is absolutely. It's more, um, I don't have the word for it. It's calming, you know, it's just calms you down. And it's, you're more engaged because yeah. as, as, as wise as I think we can be at times, Alex, you, you, an audio book, you're looking at something else. You're paying, Oh, is this guy going to hit me? Is this person at the gym in my way? Uh, my kids right here, but I'm still, you, you're, you, you know, Multitasking is a myth, you know that, right? You can't actually multitask. The people that call themselves multitaskers, God's given them an ability to jump 
from one thing to the next pretty fast, but they're never as effective as actually just doing one thing. In the book, The One Thing by Gary Keller and Jay Papazov, yeah. right? But it's a myth. So, so audiobooks, I have a lot and I've listened to a lot. But you know when I get them? After I've read them. Because I wanted to kind of re, re drill that into my mind and go, oh, I remember that. But to just say I listen to an audio, I bet you I grasp about 60% of it. When when I read it, I get about 80 to 90%. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm doing it the other way around. Um, I listen to a lot of audiobooks. Now I'm going back and I'm reading them. Yeah, so if it interests you enough, then you go back and read it. That's that, yeah. I like that. Yeah, Maybe I'll, I'll take that up. That's good. Yeah. So, so you know, um, what, what, are, what are some, you know, you said you read a lot of books, right? What, what are two or three books that you recommend um, that, that are just positive, that you can pick up a thing or two from learning, whether it's real estate related or not? Yeah. Yeah. And, and actually, most of the stuff that I read is not real estate related at all. And even the stuff that I coach on, that I train in my office to my guys, it's we're about 80% personal development and about 20% real estate. Because real estate, although it's extremely important to stay on top of your industry and know what's going on um, and know what technology is available and know all these things, without the right mindset, Alex, none of that matters. I'm extremely prepared people that take very little action. I know some people that can sit up on panels and sit up on videos and all these things and sound very, very smart, right? And they know what's going on. But when it comes to taking action, there's no replacing that. There's no enough preparedness for taking action. So the one thing, the one thing, okay, is one of those books. It teaches you about time blocking, prioritizing, and how not everything matters equally. Okay. That's also, the same one by Gary Keller, right? Gary Keller and Jay Papazov. Also, the Personal Development Bible, in my opinion, is the Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Stephen Covey. Yeah. All right. And also, I think Man's Search for Meaning by Viktor Frankl okay. is a very, very powerful book. Very powerful book. It's about him being in the concentration camp during during the World War II Nazi concentration camps. And how everyone would pretty much give up. They were done. They were toast before they even went in there. But he kept his mind occupied and he started focusing on what truly mattered and didn't become a victim of his circumstance. Yeah. You see, when we become, when we focus on our circumstance, Alex, we become a consumer. And what is there to consume in a concentration camp but death? When we become focused on capacity, we become a creator. And I think there was even some people in concentration camps that went in and when they got out, they were better golfers. They were better at their craft. You know why? Because they were the ones that occupied their time with visualization as this is going to pass. I'm going to be okay. And how can I, I come out of this even stronger? Does that sound familiar? Does yeah. that sound like today? It sounds All right. just like today. And that okay. was going through my head right when you were saying that. It's, this is like, if you think about it, we're in a concentration camp and we can visualize what's to be done afterwards. Yeah. We're in a very unprecedented situation, but we have a choice. And I'll tell you, man, um, you asked me what some of the things that I do, and you, you, you're kind of getting an, an idea of what my schedule looks like, right? Yeah. Let me tell you what I've, what I've been most focused on. One of my coaches' name is Kyle Olson. He was Jim Rohn's biz, business partner for 18 years. He founded Jim Rohn International, eventually sold it to Success Magazine and Darren Hardy. Um, he said something the other day that really – it, it rang a bell with me and it would just, you know, like I said, it, personal development, Alex, and motivation is no different than anything else. Foundational principles have been around since the beginning of time. I'm not, that's why I tell you, I'm not going to tell you anything earth shattering. I, I, I haven't heard anything really earth shattering in a long time, but I've heard some great things. It's just like a recipe for 
What's your What's your favorite Mexican food? Enchiladas. All right. Does your wife make them? She does. Okay, great. But they also sell them at restaurants, right? Correct. Okay, and, and, and her mom makes them and all kinds of things, right? So you can get a lot of different enchiladas. You're not inventing it. But what makes her... Freddie, you froze. Freddie. So the wife, What's that? the wife makes best enchiladas. Okay, so yeah, sorry, a little time out there, but you know what? No matter what happens, the show's got to keep going, right? Right. right. Yeah. So your wife makes bomb enchiladas. That's established. She likes to keep Alex happy, not too fluffy, right? Just right and just smiling. Right. Right. <laughs> but she didn't invent enchiladas, right? So they've been around for a long time. Whoever did invent them, uh, congratulations, great invention. But um, foundational principles and success principles, Alex, they haven't changed since the beginning of time. They haven't changed. They're the same. Cavemen discovered them after a while of watching and everything saying, okay, this is what it takes to be a success in life, right? And so what my coach Kyle was saying is, look, they asked him how he started his day. And as I look back, when I told you my love affair with real estate was being threatened by market conditions and I had to strengthen the relationship, right? I look back now as he said this and I think to myself, wow, I have been doing that. I have been doing that and that probably is a contributing factor to whatever level of success that I've had. I think I'm barely getting started. 43 years old, man, but I feel young. I know you may not think so, but um, I feel younger than ever. And it's because I love what I do. And I keep my mind fresh by inserting all this new information. And so what he said, Alex, he said, I start every day by being proactive. And so he said, I tell the day, I start with being proactive and dictating how the day is going to go. And, and he said a few other things, but afterwards I wrote in my journal, I wrote about five pages. I was just like, oh, it blew my mind. I'm just like, wow, that's a big contributing factor to the success, not only mine, but the people that I've coached, the people that I've helped, my business partners, my agents, and a lot of the successful people I know. Most people, what do they do? Let me tell you what I mean. Most people, what do they do when they get up? I'll tell you what, the first thing they do is they check their phone, okay? Now, once you've given that tool, it's a tool, you're not the tool, remember that. It's better for it to be your servant and not your master. Yeah, it, it's so, almost now. Yeah, and here's the thing, and we all struggle with it, but I've sh I shoot on a real high percentage, check this out. I get up, if you get up, and you work out, you meditate, you read, you play with your children, you love on your lady for a little bit, or you, you have your coffee and you come and, and you're like, all right, I'm ready for you. Come get me. Because something's gonna go wrong that day and you're gonna face some adversity. Am I correct? Absolutely. It's just a matter of what it is. So why would you ever get started without stretching, having your right equipment and your mind being right? When we jump straight to our phone, we're telling the world, hey world, please tell me how to feel about myself. We're telling the world, hey world, did anybody overnight just happen to approve of something that I said or did? Hey world, are any of my transactions falling apart? Hey world, is there any news that you want me to hear about that's gonna control the way that I do think, feel, and, and, and take action? Yeah. And then you, you get into, a reactive state. Yeah. So now you're walking on the world and you're walking around going, oh, okay, like what else can happen? What's going on? It just hit me. But when you take charge and you take initiative and you tell your day what it's going to be like, Absolutely. the rest of the universe just listens. Yeah. It somehow responds to you. So what do you think is better? A proactive day where you're taking the first hour and a half to to say, this is what I'm about this is what I want to do with my attention, or you're going to let 
this thing tell you what you're doing with your, you know, get yeah. on the calendar, fine. Yeah. No, but, I, I absolutely agree with you. And I myself was struggling with that a lot. You know, before you go into bed, I'm on social media or YouTube or, or something stupid, right? Um, or, or in the morning, right when I wake up, something stupid. So this is what I've done. <laughs> It's not, it's definitely stupid. And, and what I've done now is nine o'clock at night, I go put my phone in the car mm -hmm. and I come back inside the house. Nice. And, and in the morning, there's no phone. At nighttime, there is no phone. It's a wrap. This is it. I mean, it's and then dedication. it blows up. A, it's like, dedication. There's stuff on there in the morning yeah. where like I have to attend right away, but it's in the car. I'm too lazy to go out, you know? So I just, when I'm getting in the car to go to work or come to the office, that's when I get the phone. Yeah. Good job, dude. That's determination. You do that. Yeah. You're going to see, you know, I have this philosophy and I, I hit, I hit about 60, 70% of it where I spend 30 minutes a day with, with every member of my family, just them and I, yeah, just my daughter and I, then 30 minutes, just my son. I want them to know that they matter. Right. And so check this out, man. Uh, I'm going to take it even a step further, but I'll tell you what, in 90%, over 90% of divorces in the last five years, you know what was mentioned? Social media. Okay. Now, does that mean that somebody was up to no good? Maybe. Does that mean that they were just watching crap? More than likely. And it was just yeah. taking, you know, I've had my son slap the phone out of my hand. I right. think it's more than just watching crap, believe it or not. So I think it's about you spending time with the family or the wife, right? And, yeah. and and you're just not giving them the time of the day because you're this is like drugs. Yeah. You're you're just on it like like a robot, right? Um yeah. and you're not even seeing that you're not giving them time. And my daughter just turned one and I was telling my wife, where did the three hundred and sixty five days go? Like, what just happened? Yeah. You know? So things like that are, are making me rewire and forcing myself to lock the phones in the car, you know? Yeah. Because yep. you know, we're just, it's hard. You know what? I, I, I heard something the other day that was interesting too. It said, so, so Kyle said, you know, I start my day in a proactive way instead of a reactive way. But think about it at night too, all right? I was reading something. I don't know where, man, but if you want to email me later, maybe I can find the link. Um, it was an article that said that what you la what you spend your last like 30 minutes doing in your day will dictate the kind of dreams that you're going to have or the level of sleep that you're going to have and the blue light from the phone right it takes you about 25 minutes from the last time that you saw it to actually possibly enter the REM sleep rapid eye movement which is a deep state of sleep right it's Simon Sinek talks about it all the time he's got famous uh, the TED Talks and stuff he talks about, it. he can do it a lot more eloquently than I can, but it's no good, man. You you actually have worse dreams, they're negative, and you get less sleep, right? And then you get up and you feel, even though you don't remember being up, yeah, you don't feel like you slept. Correct. Right? So Michael J. Mayer in The Miracle Morning, he talks about something. He's actually a friend of mine. And he wrote a great book called The Level Seven Levels of Communication. You got to read it. I got all the, the coaching stuff on it. I can share with you Seven Levels of Communication by Michael J. Mayer. Last, last name spelled M A H E R, like Maher, Mayer. Okay. And so check this out. He starts off by saying, okay, the first, put your phone, don't have it anywhere where you can reach it. Because you got to be able to, you, you must have to get up to get your phone. So put it in the restroom, put it, because what happens if you're, if this is your alarm, Alex, and it's right next to you, you're going to press snooze, but you're probably not going to press snooze. You have an alarm clock that you can press snooze to. You know what you're going to do? You, you, you're going to say stop, and then you're going to start scrolling. Okay. So what you do is you get, put it out of reach. So if it's out of reach, then guess what your lazy ass, your lazy butt has to do? You got to get up. Yeah. So what he does is he puts it on the counter in the restroom by the sink. Yeah. And so it's going off, bam, bam, bam. The alarm's going off. But guess right, what's right next to his phone? A glass of water. 
Now he shotguns that glass of water and looks in the mirror and stretches. And pretty much after that, you're probably not going to go back to sleep. Yeah, it's over. It's, it's over. over. So think of the simple, like I told you, the, the principles of success, man, and they've been around forever. And it's so like, you know, talent is overrated, overrated by far. It's the people that have common sense that take action yeah. and they know what they want. So identifying what you want without that, what do you have? Nothing, right? If I wanted, what good would a map of Pittsburgh do you in Cincinnati? You have a map. What would, what good would a business plan, uh, Alex, for someone else do you? You didn't design it. You didn't know what you wanted. So I think the first step in, in what these next few years are going to be like, Alex, sometimes I think it doesn't matter. Jim Rohn once said, you know what they'd say, Mr. Rohn, what do you think the next five years are going to be like? He's like, exactly like the last five years. You're going to have adversity and opportunity. Okay? So the best way to prepare for anything, Alex, in my opinion, is to work on yourself. That's it. That's it. Yeah. I'm not so much worried. I'm not the economist uh, forecaster type that's going to go, well, this and all that. I respect that, man. We need that. Yeah. But you want to know what, in the end, what I have found that the best way that I weathered a storm of any kind handled adversity that hit me, whether it was relationship, business or anything, is I worked on myself and that I was able to mentally prepare for that. So my advice to agents or whoever, I, I, I'm not one to give advice, man. I'm, Everybody out there. I'm still learning, man. I'm still learning a lot and I'm excited, but I would say identify what you want. Identify what you want your, your ideal day to look like from as, as detailed as who, what does your avatar look like? What does your average client look like? And you start attracting people like you a lot, right? But what, what do I want? See, design the, think about the life that you want to live and then build a business around that. Yeah. Build a business around that. Don't just be running the rat race. And once you have that figured out, Alex, become better every day. Work on yourself harder than you do on your job and just work on that. If you know communication is my CRM, very important. So you call people, right? And you put the notes in there. I cannot believe that a lot of people I run into don't have a CRM. It tells me every, I input everything about them. I have a sheet that's called my favorite things. These are a few of my favorite things, right? You know the song. And so I, I have that sheet. I want I'm, to see your sheet on me. What's that? I want to see that paper on me. I'm sure you oh, have it. I'm going to send you a link to the CRM where you're already on there. Uh -huh. I know everything. I know everything we've talked about. I know what I what you told me your plans are. I know you have a daughter. I know you have a wife. I don't know when your anniversary is. I'm, I'm going to look up that up on Facebook. But, you know, it's important to. Yeah, no, it absolutely is. It's you know, very, and so I, I think just structuring your business and, and seeing what is it that I want, right? What am I committed to doing? Find technology and stick with it. Instead of being the shiny object person that's always jumping around from technology, oh, that one sucked because of this. I didn't like that one because it's, did you give it time? Did you what's, actually? What's a good amount of time, in your opinion, to give it to a technology? Six months. Six months. Lead generation, I don't know because I'll tell you something, a fault of mine in my career. I never had a technological real estate lead source. Never. Okay. I never did uh, expired Fizbo's. I did housewarming parties. I drank a beer with my clients. I connected with all their family. I had events uh, in, in different neighborhoods. I, um, I, was, uh, I did a lot of coffees, a lot of rounds of golf, and a lot of happy hours, Alex. You, you were a social butterfly. There's nothing wrong with that, you know? Finding your strength is such a key thing. Yeah. Because if you dedicate your time doing things that are in alignment with your strengths, this doesn't feel like work so much. 
That's why you and I talk about building a team and doing things and doing this. All the things that aren't income producing or that I'm just like, yeah, I like doing that. Yeah, I like doing that. Yeah, I like doing that. The things that you're like, eh, I, I mean, I know I have to do it. This business and any business is filled with a lot of things that you must do to be successful that you're not necessarily crazy about. That's when leverage comes in. Yeah. If we can get Alex to just focus on being at dinner tables with people talking about this is what your home is with, you probably love that. I know that you, you probably punch yourself in the face in the car before you walk into a listing appointment. You're pumped up. You probably play Eye of the Tiger or some Drake song that you guys, you new kids play or something to yeah. pump yourself up. But don't you love listing presentations? Absolutely. I mean, yeah, it's, yeah, 100%. If you could do that, if you could have three to four a day and that's it, and let everybody, you slay them, you, 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 you slay the, 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 uh, the prey on the table and you say, cut it up team, let's go, I'm out. Yeah. I, that's a great business, you know? And so a lot of the things like you think, oh, Justin Bieber and all these performers are great, all this production, what do they do? What do they do? Yeah, there's a lot of moving parts, right? I mean, and that's- They go out and perform. They go out, perform. Yeah. That's what they do. And so, but, you know, we got to know what we want, brother. We got to know what we want. We got to know the foundational principles of success have never changed. And if you don't know what those are, grab the Principle Centered Leadership book or gra grab Stephen Covey and yeah. John Maxwell. Yeah. Coming yeah. from a place of contribution, coming from the heart, man. Yeah. You don't do it for the right reasons. Right won't hit, won't hit too much. Yeah. You know? I, I absolutely agree. You know, it is self-improvement and doing things for the right reason and helping yeah. others is, and you know, people reached out to me a handful of times, right? Hey, Alex, what is it that you're doing uh, that, that allows you to get so much business or how are you? Able I'm calling for eight hours a day, you know, six hours a day. And, and I, I, do I like cold calling? No. Do I like the results? Yes. Um, is it required? No, there's other avenues. Yes. But I don't know, you know, for me, it doesn't make sense. So it's, it's what, what do you like? Right. And Absolutely. how can you improve at it and how can the other party benefit from it? So it's, yeah. I think you got to put the win-win scenario in mind for everybody. Absolutely. And that's, that's when you start really seeing results. You got it, bro. That's it, man. I think that, you know, if everybody just focus on things that they can control, stick yeah. to something and give it some time and actually work it. Don't tell me something doesn't work if you didn't work it, right? Yeah. Don't tell me. And, 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 and work ethic is something that, you know, I don't know. Is it instilled in you? Can you develop it? I think you can even develop work ethic at a long, at, at later in life. If you find a worthy goal, Yeah. you can. But usually the lack of motivation, Alex, and people, it's just the fact that they have no goals. And one time, I'm not going to name the agent, but it's a very seasoned, very professional, and a good friend of mine, agent in this uh, business. When I first got into business, I took him to lunch. and But he asked me, he said, well, wh why are we going to lunch? Very busy guy, right? Why are we going to lunch? I said, well, I, I didn't know what to say, but I said, you know, I just want to pick your brain. I want to see it. What have you done? What is it that you've done to make that makes you successful realtor. He goes, why should I tell you? It's not like you're going to do it anyways. Yeah. Think about that. Yeah. Everybody always wants to ask questions. They want to know the secret sauce because you know what, Alex, it can't be as simple as calling six hours a day. The reason that you're so successful, it can't be that just because Freddie reads books and he focuses on serving people that he's so successful. There's got to be something to it. The secret formula is in there. There's a shortcut, and I want to know what it is. That's yeah. what if you the can way figure that shortcut out. Let me know because I'm down for it. Well, I'll tell you what. It's, it's not it's, there. It's, it's consistency, right? Doing a daily basis, day in, day that's out, it. and that's bottom it. line, right? It's, it's developing a habit. That's you know? it. So that's yeah. it. Bottom yeah, line. that's it, man. It's there's no secret to it, and the way that people are gonna not only survive but thrive during this. Uh, uh, um, you know, pandemic is unprecedented times. Yes, things are going to change. But what can I do? Fear the change that's coming or prepare myself. 
to be able to handle that change. So does being calm prepare you? Yes. Does being physically fit prepare you? Yes. Does having your, your language, your, your, your overcoming your uh, objection handling? Yes. Does uh, making sure my database is in order and going out? Yes. Does me reaching out to my clients help me? Yes. So if you think about it, the things that are going to get you prepared to make it and come out stronger are the same things that should have been done when you first got into the business. It's no different. It's just that everybody convinces us, the people that sell, remember, if you focus on our circumstance, you become a consumer. Yeah. yeah. Well, our circumstance tells us there's no way you can do this alone. Join this club, pay this fee, have this technology, and you're going to make it. Baloney. Mm -hmm. Baloney. They're doing it too. Yeah. Fat in their pockets, my friend. Yeah, it, it's, it's tough yeah. out there, man. And, you know, I, it's – one thing I live by is if it's uncontrollable, it's uncontrollable, right? There's nothing you can do. It's, it's out of your hand. Stop dwelling on it. Just just move on. And, and That's it. Go from That's there. it. Say, say, a, say a prayer. Ask God to protect you, to keep you sharp, to, to protect your family, to keep you healthy. And yeah. let what may, you know, it's in tough times, yeah. right, that real people, strong strength is revealed, right? Anybody can do good and do in good times, Alex. And some people fool themselves. Yeah. They think, oh, I got this. I got this. Well, do you, right? What do you build your house on, right? The sand or, or the rock? What do you build it on? Aren't those things that have been written in all kinds of religious books for years? It's in the Bible. It's in everything, right? Even the three little pigs, right? Even, even when the big bad wolf came, which one held up, my friend? Yeah. Right? The one that was methodically laid out brick by brick, piece by piece, they let the foundation settle, they let it dry, and they built, they didn't start going up until the foundation was set, my friend. So yeah. it ain't as far as somebody's building, somebody's uh, a tower or building or business goes up, watch it go exactly down if it's built on the sand, my friend. Yeah. So this is a good chance for everybody with all the supposed time that we have to ourselves work on foundational principles, man. That's the best thing that I can tell you. And, and I promise you, whatever hits us, Alex, whatever comes our way, people that do that are going to find a way to thrive in any market. I, I absolutely agree. No, you know? foundations. And we've had, and we can, you know, we, we've been going on for over an hour now and we can go even like a couple more hours on foundation and stuff like from what our previous calls. But yeah, I, I absolutely agree with you. Look, it's uncontrollable. There's not much we can do. The thing, the best thing to do right now is self improve and, and just, just fine tune your skills, right? Stay in the database. Basically that's the bottom line. Yeah. I look at it. Well, Freddie, look, if there's one thing, one more thing that you want to throw out there, what would that be? Nothing, man. I think, you know, it's these are tough times in every way alex yeah they're truly ours you know the politics going on are crazy i choose to stay out of it me too the pointing fingers is all over the place right the saying why are they essential why are they not and what about this and what about that well it's my business is this here's the thing man this life is not about us and this is going to sound cliche because I'm sure, like you said, we, we, we've eaten all kinds of enchiladas, but this is my enchilada, right? You, my spices. I, I think that when we know it's not just about us and when we discover that the better we protect our fellow man and the more we pour ourselves into people and just the how are you doing, just the caring, um, just a sincere place coming from a place of contribution, a sincere care and appreciation for all of life's creation, all of God's goodness. You're not going to be perfect, man. No. Nobody is. And trying to pretend it or trying to be disturbed that other people know you're not perfect. It's just going to cause more anxiety and drama in your life. No. And so when you realize that you can only control what you can control, but we have an obligation, right? I tell my wife, I say, look, you take care of your, you for me, 
and I will take care of me for you. So if I'm becoming a better man every day, Alex, do my people here at the office benefit from it? Oh, 100%. What about my children? What about my wife? Absolutely. What about my clients? Right? Now, what's to happen in, in the afterlife? I don't know. That's up for debate, right? And we'll but, find out when we get there. But as of right now, let's... I'm not even worried about it, <laughs> which sometimes might be a bad thing, but I'm not even worried about it. I'll tell you what I'm focused on is today, man. Yeah. And that's why you see this passion in me. Right. Um, I love every minute that I'm alive, man. And some are really fun. Some are troubling. Some I have to maneuver and, 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 and find a prey and say, what do you want? What do you want right now? Like, tell me. And, and if I hear something or I get an intuition, then I tackle. If not, I go for it. And if I make a mistake and I fail, dude, I'm still smiling. Because I saw this thing on Facebook the other day, Alex. It said, the reason I trust the next chapter is because I know who the author is. It's you. And it's me. Yeah. And I, that, I, I don't know if that meme meant God, but I'll tell you what, even then, he's a big fan of us doing all we can and doing our part. So becoming a better person every day, there's nothing I uh, would advise more in this world, Alex, than just dedicate yourself to your personal development, man. The rest comes, the rest, it, it just comes. And I tell my people all the time, I don't know if you'll be here five years, 10 years, and hopefully not 10 years, right? Five years, 10 years, or if you'll just leave the business. But I'll tell you one thing. I want you to look back and say, what I learned at performance and the person that I became has tremendously helped me now, wherever it may be, whether they're in Bakersfield, whether they're in real estate, I always want them to look back and say that. And if they can say that, then my vision for my companies and for my passion as a leader has come to fruition. Yeah. And that's it, man. Spot on, Spot on line. Fair yeah. enough. Fred, thank you so much. I Sorry, do... man. I get, I get real into it, bro. Sorry. Sorry no, that's, that was good. No, we will definitely <laughs> do this again. Um, for I sure, look forward man. to it. And then I really, really appreciate talking to you and all your insights. And my commitment to you I will read one or the, the, the level of, what, it, what did you say it was by James? Seven Which level one? of commandment, yeah. Yeah, the seven levels of communication. Communication, okay. Yeah, by Michael J. Meyer. It's an awesome book, dude. Once you read it, uh, it, it uh, I'm telling you, man, your, your, your focus on your business, you're just going to go, what? Yeah. And, uh, and you're a people person yourself. I know you come from a, a good place in there, so it's going to be right up your alley, man. Definitely. Hey, yeah. thank you once again. We'll be in touch. Appreciate it. We'll see you, brother. God bless. You too. Thanks.